Okay, guys, uh, back with you here on Monday, you know, kind of early afternoon, the 4th of, of uh, November here. Now, <clears throat> as I just posted up in the comments here on the Discord, yeah, I know this wasn't our winner here. I've got tr Tron TRX to the dollar tether up, but I, having just gone through the EOS count in the chart, the, all, everything else you were looking for, whether it was ETH, which we were trying to key, stay away from the three majors, ETH, XMR, XLM, EOS, NEO, they all have essentially the same structure. So it would have been a lot of redundancy to that analysis here. It's essentially the same thing. Now, Tron, at least we have a little bit of a different, a different setup here. So the one, the one difference here is that this, this, this movement here that we're seeing here is much more, it looks much more like an ABC, whereas EOS, ETH, all the rest of them, they had, they had what, you know, we're kind of still clinging to the idea we had an impulse off the low and we're seeking the two. Here, we've come down, we've, we've eliminated that possibility here, and this does look more like an ABC. Let me get that off. I know that's annoying when I talk. So here, we're, so some interesting things here. So I thought this might be at least more, there's more to work with here technically and maybe a few other things to teach. So with double bottom down here, clear, right? And double top up here. And then all I did was just sort of kind of, you know, look for levels that's, that seem to be responsive where the market is reacting, right? So I just took this, this pivot here right? and we'd see, yeah, we got a, a pump wick through it, but here, 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 and all of this looks like this level was significant to the market. Then same thing down here, tagged it, tagged it, tagged it, tagged it. Now we're through, right? So now we're back underneath again, and then our double bottom down here. So just doing that, which is something I would encourage you to do on any chart you're pulling up. You're just looking for levels that the market's reacting to. Maybe there's something there. So as we look here, now, so what happens is that now just looking at that, it looks like it's pretty close to equidistant, doesn't it? Right? Like we've we've divided the market here into quarters. I mean, I suppose you could, you don't really have anything else to work with up here. That's getting a little bit. We're pushing a little bit here, so that looks like it'd be larger. And we don't have anything else to tag it. But if I go to the the second one here, pretty close. But I digress. So here, here my point being, it looks like I've got a nice clear playing field here that's been divided into quads so of course first thing i'm thinking is is wolf tool so you know you you, you might start l looking here but the, the typical application you're looking for the first swing and then the retrace to hold right so here I, that's why i always put the 50 on here but look, you know, look here right? so fr from our first little swing here here's the hundred 200, 300, 400 gets it to the tick. Interesting. So here being our 50. So what is that telling me? Well, the market's not moving in, in, in typical FIB relationships. I mean, some of these are all right. And there's a little fancy footwork has to be done here to to get this one, this one and this four to play ball, but you know I can kind of look here and go, all right, well I've got I've got quadrants here that seem to be in play in the market here. So here I'm now I'm in lower quad, right? So just moving them up, moving them up, right? So the here, well because I've got the the lower range here, I got one, two, three, four, five different quadrants. So here I am. You, know, you can think of this as as being halfway point of control. Right now, I know that's visible range here, but we can see all of that. It's kind of dividing this up rather rather nicely here into these quads. So down here, buyer. Here, not sure. Here, so the other way you might look at it is that here and here, well, let's just expand it. No man's land. Buyer, right? selling pressure, you might think of it that way. Now we can get a count to complete down here into this double bottom. And so, okay, maybe maybe we have something started here, but when I see the market responding, but look, and of course, look what we run right into, right? The 100, right? Which is right right back here to a, a previous level that, that the market seems to be reacting to. It's not exactly one of the ones that I drew here, but I just kind of push this up here and go, all right, well, that seems to be influencing the market. And what is that? Exactly halfway between this, this no man's land here. So when, when you see the market responding to this range expansion that with that amount of precision, right? I, I don't want to ignore that. I want to pay attention to that. So as I sit here ta having tagged the, the middle of no man's land here, I'm coming back down. Well, maybe there's an opportunity here. So, but I'm, I'm just, you know, kind of be aware of that. So I'm going to take this off. 
but it's just another way to try and analyze where the market is. Do we have zones that are meaningful that I can, I can trade off of? So with that established, we do have a count here that we can work with, and this action here has, been, has actually been quite technical. So with that little nugget acknowledged here, yeah, so yeah, okay. All right, so you got to do a little fancy footwork here, as I said. So to make this play Elliott ball here, you got to go one A, expand the B into the C. And yeah, I right, I know. So you could do. So well, you think do it one two ways. You, you can go all right, fuck. All right, so if this is the one, we get a couple of ticks overlap. All right, you're a purist, right? Your hair's on fire, right? If you're not a purist, as I am not, I might look for a workaround or just allow for it. You get a little volatility spike, you know, right? I don't think we have a clear, a clear A, B, C to follow. In fact, I think this looks like an impulse here. So what do you do, right? So you know, if you're a purist, you go, okay, can't can't be, can't allow it. Yeah, I'm not a purist, right? So I, I look at this and go, all right, so something something came down and finished here. Now, is it pretty? Of course, no, it's not, right? Very shallow two, kind of a choppy three. Is this the four? Is this the four here? Can you really dig five out of that? You know, maybe I'm on an eight hour here. Maybe you get something down on a smaller time frame. You can dig it out, all right? So, you know, again, it's, you know, people, man, Elliot is, is, is pros and cons, right? So, <clears throat> new traders when they when they're first learning it gets so attached to it i've been doing this for 25 years i'm telling you guys being a purist has has value at times but you'll you're going to miss a lot right by being that strict to it because the market is imperfect and trying to look for perfection Right, so I, you know, I allow for a little slop around the edges on right, but certainly letting Elliot be a guideline. If it's as I always say, if it's adding value, good. If it's not, right, don't pay attention to it. The, the, remember, the core of all of of everything we're doing, whether it's Elliot or not, is just internal and external retracements. That's all that's happening here. Swing, retrace. Does it stay internal? Okay. Does, if we retrace, if we have a swing, we get an internal retracement. Does it eventually go external? That's all this is, right? All over and over and over and over again. Internal, external, internal, external. Right now, if it helps you to build the Elliott rule set around it, and okay, we'll put a label and a letter and a number, great. But you know, don't get so caught up into it that you're paralyzed if you can't get the Elliott count. All right, so we, we, we ran into some friction with that um, <clears throat> over the weekend with some, some members and just some, some of the things that I do that where I'm you know, not as strict as some of my senseis are. So right, I, again, I've been doing this long enough so that, that if I'm breaking a rule, I know I'm doing it as opposed to someone else who may not, doesn't have that, that depth of experience, you know, is, is clinging to that rules. And I'm not saying that's not, not, there's not value in doing that, but don't, don't let it par paralyze you or keep you out of something where like, oh, okay, this would make a lot of sense, except for I've got a two tick, two sat overlap over here, All right? So if you, if you need, if you're gonna feel better, well, play the little expanded, All right? So then it's, it's tick to tick. All right, so not, not to digress too much. Okay, so what do we have down here? So I have a contender. This is a contender. If for, no, if for nothing else, right, whether Elliot aside, uh, I've got a pretty solid double bottom down here. Now, that doesn't mean that that must be the low, but it means I've got something to work with. Okay, I got a double bottom. Right, I can make a case for a, a completed five coming down here with a little slop in the middle. Yeah, I get it. All right, so let, let's go down. Let's go down to an hourly and take a look at what's happening coming off of the low. All right, well, so immediately, well, do I have a, some sort of a motive? Yeah, probably. Can probably work a one into that, in, into a two. Do I have enough for a three, four? Well, maybe, maybe I got this going in. Maybe, all right, so just force of habit. I'm gonna wick off the one. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like, all right, that's the kind of thing that would that would be important to, if I'm applying Elliott Wave. Can I get an impulse in the third? Right, that's that's not optional. There's no there's no allowing for slop there. Either there's an impulse or there's not. So it, now, kind of interesting here that the structure seems to hold it. Right? But as as per the Elliott count, all that matters is do we hold this one? 
Well, but the st- structure is structure, right? So you know, th- this pivot has significance to the market or it wouldn't be there. So then you kind of go, all right, all right, just bring it bring it left. Anything else there? Well, you know, again, a couple of wicks. It's not ticks t- to the tick, but clearly this, this area is important to the market. Okay, is it technical? Well, first thing, <coughs> excuse me, guys, first thing, what what can, do I have an ABC here? Because at first glance you kind of go, "Hey, it looks like five. Well, you, know, you gotta might have to be a little little creative with that and do it something something along these lines, right? Is it is it perfect? Right? No, right? LA wave is not perfect, nor is it a perfect prognosticator of what's to come. It's just a way to organize history and then create probability zones. You guys get yeah. Too, too, too attached to it, right? It's just another set of tools. All right, so what do I have here? Is this, is it, do I have a technical pivot? Okay, well, come here. I got a low, I got a swing. All right, let's get a measured move back on there. Okay, from my low here. All right, do I have a, man, some sort of an impulse? Okay, what do I have here? Right, so members, you know this, right? In terms of the priority of, of, <clears throat> Technical tools, right? Te- technical confluence. Elliott wave is third in line. So that golden zone right here, tagging that to the tick, priority number one. What's priority number two? Market geometry. Do what if I've got a golden zone? What do I have here? Golden corner. Right. What? What? Why do we love a golden corner? One, the risk reward is 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 extremely good, right? It stops on the other side of the 65. I can't. I don't know that I can get into the market with any less risk. I've got 80 percent odds of making the median line. Look, look, look. Once it gets there, look at the reaction. You, you think that's random? I, I promise you, it's not. Right, boom! Right, and we, okay. And then where where? So we get through the median line. What do we run into? Structure. Right, so then, then you think, oh, okay, well, I got them 80% is realized. Well, now we're back here, but look, there's something smaller in here. What do we do here? Here's 50. Look, third target. Okay, so now I'm starting to feel pretty good about the, about, because I know that's my shorthand here. So I've got a three, four, five. Now, let me get that degree is way too big. All right, so let's get that. Oh, well, something we can see. All right, so now I'm kind of now I can kind of put together a count here, but I didn't start looking for the count. I started with oh, got a got a got a golden zone retracement here. I what do I have? I have a swing. I have an internal retracement that happens to be technical to the tick. I don't really care about that subdivision. Tell you the truth, I don't really care. Swing internal golden zone, perfect corner pocket. And it's a golden corner pocket, right? So I like it all the more. Why do I like it all the more? Because of the risk reward, right? So because I can buy it here. I so first target is the median line, but look here, I can just put a couple of ticks. And yeah, I can give it a little, you know, allow for some 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 sort of a wick pump here. Look, you can see what happened. That the little pump down to get it to the six one eight. So there's an algo there. It's just waiting for it. Up it goes. All right. So just that just that first. Right? Well, just to the median line. There's 7.2 to 9 to 1. Oops. 7.2 to 1. Wave 3 target, 17.5 to 1. What do we just do? Do I really, really, really care whether what the subdivision is here of this first wave? No, I don't. I don't. That's me personally. I don't I don't I could care less. What what do I really care that I'm not so sure about the ABC in here? No, not really. This is what I care about that right there. That's enough for me. I could, after that, the Elliott wave is just gravy. Oh, well, it did a nice impulse and it went to the 1618 to the tick, by the way, right? So you know why, why, why we use that, right? So if I, if I actually put it on there, right? All right, so here's my, well, it's slightly off here. Let me get this on here. So here's my, if this is my one, two, well, we don't quite make the one, six, one, eight here, but I'm certainly far enough and given the subdivision here. So I've got the, I've got the one, six, one, eight of the internal here. So this one is getting the, the one, six, one, eight. So I'd have to draw it again here just to make the point. All right. So there we go. All right. So since we don't, since this one is between the 50 and the six, one, eight, we don't quite get there. It's when it goes to the six, one, eight. Right, to the golden zone, then we get the, the overlap. So it's very, very close. 
right? So it's just, it's just my, the point I always reference is because you don't have to draw the APP if you don't want to. You can just go, all right, I can see enough here. That's going to be a wave three contender. All right, so let's pull all of this off here. So now we're outside of the range of the median lines. It still has value here. So what have we done? We've come back to this area here. So let's get this off here. So now we're, now we're kind of hovering around the median line. So if this is going to continue on here, okay, I got a target. I got a reasonable target here for my, for my fifth. Now let me see. This just starts to pollute the chart, which is why I will, I will typically just use the, the retracement tool because I know if I'm, if I'm far enough here. Okay, so my point being, all right, let's get this one off. Okay, so I've got one, two. I've got an impulse here. I've got some sort of an ABC as I've come back to the median line. All right, I got a reaction. I've had a little, a little pop off of that. Well, are we technical? Let's get this off and just check it. So I've got a two. I've got a contender for a three. What do I do? 50 to the tick. All right, so now I can be a little more precise with that target because I know damn well an algorithm kicked in there to buy it at that 50. And what else was there? Now, that's 50 to the tick, guys. Do I care? Do I really care how this breaks down? Nope, don't. All right, so... It, so note here, if you're down here going, oh, well, I know that it's for, per my Elliott wave count here, I've got to have five here. I'm not taking that trade. Well, I'm not that that's, I'm not saying that that's foolish. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But don't get so caught, in, you're going to miss, right? So even, even if we think of Bitcoin, right? So when I was just screaming at you guys to buy Bitcoin, we didn't get the perfect five that we were looking for, hoping for. What you had was the market in the prime buy zone. So wh whether or not I could get down to the 15 minute and get the five of the five of the five of the five, fuck. You're, with, particularly with something like Bitcoin, you're there. No, that's zero hesitation for me. Right? So that's, you know, that's, that's individual trader, you know, your trading plan, your risk tolerance, right? I mean, there, there is no one correct way to do it, which is kind of what I'm trying to say here. You don't, there, you don't have to wait until this gives you a clear five down to the two minute chart before you take the trade. Do you, do you see all the components, the pieces that are here? Structure, median line. 50. I know an algo is going to respond there. Now, that doesn't mean I am not saying that the low is in and we are never coming back down. This could easily fall and do that. Easily. Right? But, but then at least, I mean, I know what's going on here. Oh, okay. Well, now we're going back down here. We're going to catch the lower parallel at the next golden zone. Maybe I have to draw another one. Maybe that's, I've got a secondary golden going in. And then, then I've got something else to work with here. Right? Okay, I get that. Maybe that's what's happening here. So if you're taking this trade here at the 50 off of structure, media, all the things I just said, not to mention Vegas wave right in there. If you're taking that trade, you're doing it eyes wide open. Okay, I didn't get a clean five here. So I recognize that the, there is real potential that that has one more push down. But just in the same way, right, we don't, you don't, don't there is no absolute like it must do that. There is no must in the market. It, it mustn't do anything. It, it'll do whatever the hell it wants to do. We're just trying to hang on and not do something stupid. Now, is buying that 50 stupid? I, I promise you there are people that tell you yes, right? Because we didn't get, the C didn't finish. What, what, you know, so is it stupid? No, not to me, right? I, there's enough there. There's enough there for me to take that trade. Now, am I going to put my mortgage money at risk there? No, no, hell no. So you don't need you don't need to be you know it doesn't need to be you know the trade has to be absolutely perfect and then I go big, right? Trades. You've heard me say this a thousand times. They're like buses, man. There's always another one coming. Is this a good little trade? Do am I going to get rich on this trade? No, well, probably not, right? I don't know where that's going. But is there a trade there that's valid? With reasonable risk reward, absolutely. And is it in conflict with the Elliott count? Yeah, it is. So that's where you make a decision as the individual. Okay, I only take tra you could you, so I'm not saying this is me. You could say, all right. So my trade plan means that unless I can get a clear Elliott count that I can understand and make sense of where it's pivoting, I don't take the trade. There, then then you then you've missed this trade, which I'm not saying is good, bad, or I'm just saying that if that's if that's your trade plan, then stick to it. 
That's not my trade plan. So I do things differently than a traditional Elias would, Elliotician would, just based off of 25 years of doing this. Right? So what's stu- here, here, here's how you turn this into a, a reasonable trade into a stupid trade. Put your stop here. Well, you know, as long as it holds above that level, then, I, you know, I want to be long. That's how you turn it into a stupid trade. Right? Ultimately, when lo- there, there are going to be smart trades that lose money. There are going to be dumb trades that make money. Right? Who, defining whether it's smart or dumb, that, that's between your ears. You know if you've done something dumb. And it's not necessarily purely a result of whether the trade made money or not. Dumb almost always relates back to money management rather than whatever technical components you use to to coordinate your entry or exit. Dumb gets down to how much money did you risk? How big did you take the trade? Where was your stop? How disciplined you? Did you start moving the stop because you didn't want to get stopped out? Those are dumb things. Taking a trade here because I've got three out of four technical components and I can't quite get clarity on the Elliott Wave, that's not dumb as long as you know you're doing it, right? I take that trade, I know what I'm doing there. I know I'm breaking, I know that's not a valid count there. All right, so just be clear with yourself as to what, 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 what is a dumb trade to you, right? And it won't always be whether it's a winner or a loser. Right? And that will come with time and experience. Right? I, not not to, su- to suggest that I don't still make mistakes or do things that I go, oh, I'm not so sure about that. Right? So w- if I don't like the feel of a trade, I'm quick to get out. If I think, oh, maybe, maybe. So we could use this as an example. Right? So I, you know, here at 50, like it. I like the structure. If this starts to move up here, good. I'd probably be quick to tighten up on a stop here because, because of the fact that I have kind of a wobbly count here. But if that starts to go and I get back to median line here, now I would not be reluctant to add to that if I get something like that. Now I'm looking for the five. That would be just convenient for the market to cooperate with me and give me a nice clean impulse to finish this. Right, so the fact that I couldn't quite make sense of this and couldn't quite, that didn't quite make sense to me. From an Elliott perspective, if I got this action, I would have zero hesitation adding there, zero. Right, right back to the median line. I'm between the 50 and the 618. What, what do I think I've got there? Well, so this was ugly, but one, two. They're not all going to be like you're seeing in your Elliott Wave for dummies uh, trading book or, or whether you're reading the, the, the Elliott Wave principle. It's not always going to cooperate. Market is imperfect, Im, imperf- is full of imperfections. Elliott Wave is not about perfection, it's about probabilities and organizing the past to create those probabilities. All right, so well, I got on a rant here. Didn't really mean to, but just kind of some things that were coming up over the weekend where I just you guys need to be clear that we at Trade Devils University, we're not Elliott Wave pure, we're not trying to be an Elliott Wave resource. It's a tool. It's something that we use. There's value in it or we wouldn't spend 5 seconds on it. But it's not about being a purist, in my in my view. Right? So that's my opinion, right? I, again, it's not about what's dumb, right, or wrong. It's just about getting comfortable with the, with with yourself and how you want to trade the market. All right, kind of got on a rant there. I don't know that there's necessarily anything to do here if you didn't take that trade, right? So if you're not in this trade, I don't know that you you need to be jumping all over it here just because I, I went through that little rant. You, you know, if you didn't catch that, if we're going to go here, as I just drew, if this, if this goes, right, and, we're, and we get another internal retracement, that may be a better time to get on that. All right, guys, so more a lesson than necessarily a trade setup, but a few things to think about, and uh, we'll call it a day there. All right, guys, talk to you later.